back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, my name is Buandunji and I am so glad you're here. Now, usually I talk about writing and I talk about books and sometimes even talk to members of my family, but today I am just going to be talking about books. And I know I've been promising Uganda videos. I'm telling you, editing has just become like another job. I need to get paid. <laughs> to do all that editing for all the footage that I got. But anyway, I want to bring it to you, so I'm working on it. I promise you will have a video, I promise. I want to start out by talking about a book that I just, just finished, and it is called Ready Player One. Now, I bought the physical copy of the book because I was dying to sort of get into it and start. As you can see, the bookmark is right at the beginning, so I hadn't gotten far. Then I got an alert from Overdrive saying that the audio copy that I had reserved is now available for me to listen to. And you know I love audiobooks. It is how I consume most of the books that I read. It is the way I entertain myself so I can do something else with my hands. I'll try to make this brief because I have a whole bunch of books also that I want to talk about. I got stuff to say about this book. I'm very interested in virtual and augmented reality. I can see what potential it has in our lives, how it can change our societies to make things better. So that is the reason why I picked up this book because most of it happens in virtual reality. The other book that I really enjoyed that tackled the whole virtual reality scenario was Eye of Minds by James Dashner and I enjoyed that book and actually did a review. Ready Player One is set in a dystopian world where everything has gone to shit. Everything is bad, so people escape their lives by living in virtual and augmented reality so that they can do anything and be anyone and achieve whatever goals it is that they want to achieve in this world. So this guy, Halliday, is the one who created this virtual reality world that he calls Oasis. But five years prior to the start of this story, he died. And when he died, he left a message for everyone who has an account on Oasis and told them that he had hidden an Easter egg in Oasis because he didn't have any children, he didn't have a wife, didn't have family, so there was no one to inherit his millions and billions of dollars. So instead, what he decided to do was to set a series of quizzes and put games so that the people who were able to figure out the quizzes and win the games would be able to find the egg and inherit his money, which I think they said was half a billion dollars, which is, you know, that's some cheddar I could work with, half a billion dollars, half a trillion dollars, I apologize. So now there are a whole bunch of people who are looking for this Easter egg, but it's been five years and one person found a clue, but nobody has any keys to open any doors. So a teenager who is obsessed with Halliday and has watched the movies he watched, sang the songs he loved, and done all the things that Halliday would have done as somebody who grew up in the 80s, has suddenly found another clue. He and four other young people are set on a quest to find the Easter egg. The antagonist is a man called Sorrento who is at the head of a company that trained people called Sixers. So here are the Sixers looking for the Easter egg and here are these five young people and honestly like five, six. <laughs> It's funny. So there are five young people and they're the Sixers and everybody's looking for the egg and the Sixers don't play by the rules and they have all these artifacts because they have gobs and gobs of money. And of course, you know, since it is a book that is relatively a happy one, the five people get the money and not the Sixers. That is the basic premise of these books. This is a young adult novel about young people on a quest to make themselves rich and they end up doing it. Yeah! I have so many issues with this book, but as you know, I'm going to try and hold back like I usually do. No! I tried to watch the movie of this book and found that the two had nothing to do with each other. How did these two people meet? Not like that. Where did these other people go? They didn't go there. What was the test for some? That was not it. It was just completely different. I hadn't listened to any reviews because I wanted to have sort of a fresh perspective so that I didn't prejudge it. The other issue that I had with it is how representation was done. He tried, he tried. You have five characters characters and you want to include as many people as possible of different races because you're a white dude and you're trying to show that you're not racist. I do have to say that the whole 80s pop culture was 80s white pop culture because I do not remember Michael Jackson.
Jackson being named, but correct me if I'm wrong, I did not hear any Michael Jackson references. Also, there was no Whitney Houston. And then there was the phrase, the classic 80s hit song, the classic 80s television show, the classic 80s blockbuster movie. Like, honestly, where was the editor? Chop those words out. It was too many, the classic 80s, the classic 80s, the classic 80s. Anyway, that is Ready Player One. I would give it three stars. It was an interesting adventure because I like playing games and I love the setting of the virtual world. It was very vivid. It was interesting and it hit all the right spots. You know, the good guys get the prize in the end. So three stars for Ready Player One. While I was in Uganda, my very last weekend, can you believe it? That was when they held the Uganda book market event at the museum, at the National Museum. I had the opportunity to go ahead and get some books for myself. So I want to show you the books that I got. So the first book that I want to show you is a book called Ebishushani, which basically means pictures. And it is a picture book called People, Poses, and Places. And it is by Musa Katramu, who took a lot of photographs and has compiled them in this book. There are pictures of weddings. There are pictures of royalty. There are pictures of families and vegetation and homes, stories upon stories. There aren't very many words in this book. There are a few words to tell you what was happening in some of the pictures, but he's not telling the stories of these people. And so it's less Left to the imagination who these people are. Somebody's face is torn off of this picture and we don't know why. It was so fascinating to me. There was no way I was going to leave this book behind. The second book that I want to share with you. Oh, I could not believe when I saw this book up there. It is The Clans and Totems of the Banyakigezi. If you have not seen the video where I talk about where I'm from and who my people are, I will leave that link in the description box below. When I saw this book on the table, I immediately picked up this copy for myself because can you imagine? We don't typically have books that talk about who our people are and who the ancestors were. People in my family have been able to recite the ancestors up to a certain generation, but here we have more. So there is Kigezi history and geography. Of course, you gotta know. The most important page <laughs> is where my ancestors are. Now they went according to the eldest son. My father and my grandfather are not in this, but my great grandfather is in it and we know his name, so it's great. On page 266 of this book is my lineage. Mutambuka right there is my great grandfather. So it's really exciting for me to have this kind of information in written form in this day and age. This is precious to me. Another book that I picked up is Yoruba Love Stories. Olabote wrote these uh, love stories. He set them in the tradition of Yoruba folk stories, like romance, Yoruba style. Another book that I picked up that was not by a Ugandan, but that I could not leave behind is The Tales of Kamanda. In the back, it says, Dark forests, sun-baked plains, Nubian and Egyptian heroes, beautiful princesses, fearful monsters, ghastly witches, many-headed snakes, badly behaved ants, parrots, and crocodiles. All this and more will entertain young and old in this first volume of Commander's Tales. I wasn't leaving it behind. Definitely, I'm excited to find out what goes on in this book. So let's talk about some of the Ugandan books that I picked up. The first one is this one, Deserted by Bob G. Kisiki. This book is about children whose older sister has abandoned them and they are afraid that they're going to be labeled deserted and they will be taken in and separated. And so they try as much as possible to keep up the facade that there's a grown up in the house who's taking care of them. That is what this book is about. I don't know whether I'm ready to cry, but anyway, this author has written three other books. So I'm looking forward to dive into this book. The second book that I want to talk about is a book called White Mist, Victoria Abigail. It is the story of of a man who falls in love with a woman in Vienna. So it's an, an interracial love story and how he navigates the relationships with a girlfriend he left at home and his parents and introducing to them this woman that he just met a week ago and has decided to be with for the rest of his life. The next book, Zura Made by Apio Yunis Otuko. And it is the story of human trafficking in a displaced people's camp, in a refugee camp, and is about this one person, Lena, 
Sonia who tries to escape this life and she gets imprisoned because this is being upheld by a corrupt system underneath. The last book that I want to share with you was just, I saw the cover, I saw what it said on top and I was like, come home with me. No! Here is the book, The Chwezi Code, and it was written by Nick Twinamasiko. The book is basically about this gentleman who pretends to be a diviner of spirits of the Bachwezi. If you don't know anything about the Bachwezi, I will leave a link in the description box below so you can go and find out some of the exciting things, the exciting stories that Ugandans have to tell about the Bachwezi. Pretends to be a diviner of these gods, of these spirits, and guess what? They actually show up! They show up and torment him, and so this is a story about his adventures with that. And as someone who is fascinated, the Bachwezi fascinate me so much. Because some people claim to be descended straight from the Bachwezi. It's intriguing, it's interesting, so I can't wait to get into this book. So those are the books that I picked up at the Uganda book market. I wish I was there each time to rummage through the books and pick up some more. If you are in Uganda, please make it your job to go to the the Uganda book market to pick up some books because we have to support the authors. The only way that we build the publishing industry is if we are invested in it as well. I'd like to give a big, big shout out to a group of Ugandan women. They are from so many stories. They have an account on YouTube where they have these book discussions and I encourage you to go and visit and subscribe. The channel is called Me I Read and they upload videos regularly. So please check them out. Please subscribe. Subscribe. All right, so that's what I had for you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for giving me your time. I know you're busy and yet here you are watching this video and I hope it has been valuable to you. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video because you know what? There are lots of people who need this information. And please go ahead and let me know if you have read any of these books, which ones you like. And finally, if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. The subscribe button is right here. And don't forget to click that bell icon so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!